guys, how's it going? It's me, Elliot Roberts, with Browning. I've been asked recently quite a bit about the new Maxus 2 um, and kind of how it compares to the um, to the original Maxus. So I just thought I'd do you a quick video to show you a like-for-like -like comparison. What's stayed the same, um, what you've gained, what you've lost, and um, just kind of, kind of give you my general thoughts and a bit of an overview. And if you're in the market for a new semi-auto, um, clearly Maxus is the way to go. Maybe this will um, just help you kind of decide which one to go for. What I've got to my side here is um, the John Moses Browning Limited Edition Maxus. They've only made a hundred of them, but it is still, um, apart from you know some nice wood and fancy engraving, it's still kind of your original model Maxus. And next to that is my new composite carbon fiber Maxus 2. Both of these to start with are 28 inch barrels. Um, I do find the receiver on the semi-auto is quite long, so Going for that 28 inch barrel, I normally shoot a 30 inch, kind of compensates and it, it feels and swings like a, a 30 inch in my opinion. So uh, most of you will be fairly familiar with this now. This is the um, original Maxxis. It's been out for a while now, really popular, super reliable, gas operated and very light recoil. The kind of features that made the Maxxis what it was, was obviously the speed load system the speed lock forearm and the magazine cutoff switch here. The purpose of the speed load system is really simple. Um, it means you don't have to operate the bolt handle and bolt release as much. If the bolt's open, you can just slide your first cartridge straight into the magazine tube and it'll automatically cycle into the chamber, closing the bolt. With the original Maxxis, one of my favorite features on it is the speed lock forearm. And I think it's one of the things that made it really stick out as uh, a Browning Maxxis compared to most of the others on the shelf. Um, rather than having the screw on um, end cap on the end there to take the forearm off, with the original Maxxis you simply have just a push, um, a, a little push lever and then the whole, um, the whole forearm just slides off like that. Um, the gun itself is gas operated, uh, so as you probably saw there inside there is a, a gas piston, makes for a really light recoil, um, semi-auto and really reliable with cycling as well. Um, I'd never really shoot a semi-auto with 21 gram cartridges, but I have managed to get this to cycle with them. 24 grams seems fine, and obviously anything above that, you know, your usual kind of 28 gram and upwards is absolutely no problem at all. Um, I've shot quite a lot of semi-autos, and to be honest with you, this has been the most reliable that I've had. Um, I've shot a lot of inertia guns. I know there's a load of people that will swear by inertia powered semi-autos. Um, but I find the Maxxis is just a hell of a lot less punchy and flawless when it comes to cycling and reliability, which is which is what you want. So this is the Maxxis 2. So internally, um, pretty much identical, if not identical. And, you know, same internals, um, same gas system. You'll just notice that kind of cosmetically there are a few differences. I think the, the first thing is you'll notice straight away is it is slightly more streamlined in appearance, a little less boxy looking. I think some of the criticism I did hear of the Maxxis 1 is the forearm can feel a little bit square and boxy. This is a lot more rounded and probably a bit more comfortable in your hands. The receiver here, again, is a bit more streamlined. The actual trigger guard itself um, is ramped just to enable, kind of, I don't think I'd ever really need it, but just enable a bit of ease with loading your cartridges into the magazine. Again, it has got the um, speed load system in there, so you can still just load that first shell um, straight into the magazine and cycle it into the chamber. The kind of main most noticeable differences on the Maxxis 2 is in the, the forend here. So we've lost the um, uh, speed lock forearm and they have gone back to a kind of conventional screw cap. I understand why they've done it. Uh, I think it looks really good. It's uh, nice and ergonomic. Personal preference, I was really disappointed to see the, the, the end of the uh, speed lock forearm because that was one of my favourite features of the Maxxis and I think it's what made it look like a Maxxis and um, you know it was quite distinctive. But I guess what they're wanting to do is kind of cater for extended magazine tubes and just give people a bit more flexibility with how they want to kind of kit out and customise their shotgun. Uh, so if you're doing practical shooting or uh, pest control or whatever and you just need that uh, bit of extra capacity, you've got that option there which you didn't have on the Maxxis 1. So again, that might be for some people the thing that sells the Maxxis 2 for them just in itself. The 
actual stock as well. So you'll notice we've got a um, soft uh, recoil um, cheek pad here. Um, we've got rubber over molded grips, both in the pistol grip there and on either side of the fore end. Um, I do quite a lot of pigeon shooting um, and just general pest control and kind of out at the farm and things when it's getting wet and rainy. It's, it's comfy to hold and it keeps your grip. So it is, it is good. The Maxxis 2 has gone for oversized bolt handle and bolt release. Um, again, just to make everything just a bit more ergonomic, a bit easier to handle and operate. Um, especially if you're kind of, you know, getting into the winter time, uh, wild fouling, um, or just in cold environments and you've got your big gloves on, the, um, the bolt handle and bolt release is just a lot easier to operate because everything's just a little bit bigger. Um, so it's not as clumsy and fiddly. So I think overall kind of what Browning's done with the Maxxis 2 is take what is already a hugely popular um, and super reliable uh, semi-automatic shotgun and just refined it to make it more ergonomic, more streamlined, more user-friendly, uh, more adaptable, uh, more comfortable. Um, they really have just kind of thought about all the little details that a shooter would need on kind of a daily basis for various applications and kind of combined it all to give you an absolutely perfect all-round semi-automatic shotgun. Apart from that, they are pretty much exactly the same gun. You're just buying a different look, a different style. Internally, they're going to do exactly the same thing. Um, it just depends kind of what is important to you. Do you want to go with the ramp trigger guard, the um, option for a magazine tube on the end, um, or do you like the old style look? Um, I can't think for the money of many semi-autos that would probably beat this. Um, like I say, I know a lot of people prefer the inertia and we will not be able to convince them otherwise. But seriously, if you're looking for a semi-auto for the first time, or if you're looking for a change, just go and give one of these a go. I genuinely do not think you can get any better than a Maxxis. So like I say guys, internally, they're exactly the same. Um, you're basically going for cosmetics. Do you prefer the speed lock forearm or the screw cap? forearm with the option to do an extended magazine tube. Do you like the slightly more square forearm or the more rounded, the solid forearm or the rubber grips, the ramp trigger guard or the normal? Um, let me know what you think.